Hello, my lovelies. Today is a mental health day. Rather than discussing issues I face, I want to turn our attention to our pets. There have been a multitude of research reports telling us that having pets helps relieve our stress and improves our quality of life and general health. I think the vast majority of pet owners accept this to be true, so I'm not going to go over all that today. Instead, I think we need to deviate from my normal routine and dedicate a little time to things we might do in our home that is harming our pets. Specifically, I will be looking at essential oils and dogs. Before we go any farther, I just want to say welcome to Cape Bonnie Country. Thank you so much for stopping by. This channel is not possible without viewer support, so please remember to like this video, subscribe and get notified, comment, and share with your friends and family. Hello everyone, this is Kate Bonnie, and I'm just giving you a quick update before we get into today's video. Uh, we are currently at 52 subscribers, and I am so happy and so glad to have each and every one of you. But it would absolutely thrill me to death if we had 100 subscribers by February 14th. So please do me a solid and share my videos and my channel with your friends and family and let's see if we can get to that 100 subscriber mark by February 14th. Thanks a bunch y'all. I have a new microphone, a Movo UM700. It's normally around $100 which is a little more than I wanted to invest but I caught this one on sale for $70. I used it to re-record the audio on the channel introduction. What do you think? Does it sound better now? I am using the new microphone for the entire episode. There is a storm outside right now, so we will see how much rain and thunder seeps in. Back to today's topic. Several days ago, I saw a short where a woman was talking about almost killing her dog by using an oil diffuser in her home. Unfortunately, I can't find the link for it now, so I can't directly link the short. Anyway, that made me think about what I might be doing that is hurting my pets. First up, let's talk about tea tree oil. It has antibacterial and antifungal properties. So people use it to treat skin conditions like acne, athlete's foot, nail fungus, and simple scrapes and cuts. In the 1980s, it hit the USA under the brand name of Melaleuca. This company put the oil in everything from shampoo to glass cleaner. They even sold pet food and treats that had tea tree oil in them. A lot of pets got sick. Tea tree oil is toxic to dogs. In the video I mentioned earlier, the woman had added tea tree oil to her oil diffuser. And the dog started breaking out in a rash and had difficulty breathing within 10 minutes. She rushed the dog to the vet. The dog was treated and recovered. In the video, the lady was in tears because she almost killed her dog and had no idea that tea tree oil was toxic like that. She knew not to feed it to her dog, but she didn't know that breathing the vapors could cause respiratory distress. Anything that is toxic to a dog if they eat it can be and most likely is toxic to dogs if they breathe it. Let me repeat that. If it is toxic to a dog if eaten, then it is most likely toxic to dogs if they breathe it. When choosing an air freshener spray or oil diffuser, make sure to choose scents that are not toxic to dogs. Most Southerners know that chrysanthemums, also just called mums, and azaleas are toxic to dogs. So we either don't plant them in our yards or keep the dogs away from them. Most people consult with landscapers and make sure that toxic plants are not placed in the areas their dogs access. This is a good thing. However, these same people don't generally think about what they put in the air in their homes. For example, gardenias are very fragrant 
and used in a lot of air fresheners. And they are toxic to dogs. Fortunately, the toxic compounds are only found in trace amounts in the essential oils. Acute poisoning that requires immediate veterinarian attention is rare and generally happens when a dog has ingested a large amount of the essential oils. That said, there is some evidence that prolonged breathing of the compounds can lead to coughing, irritation of the lungs, and an increased chance of developing respiratory infections. Personally, I am not fond of the scent of gardenias, so I'm not one to buy air fresheners where that is a primary scent. As you can see from these screens, there are many plants that are toxic to dogs. Keeping the scents that are derived from them out of your home completely is probably an unrealistic goal. The best course of action is to read labels before buying. However, most labels just say fragrances and do not state which components are in it. I have learned to stick with the scents that I am confident are not toxic to my dogs. I use a lot of crisp apple smells in my home. I am cautious when trying new scents. The first time I use it, I watch for any reactions, changes in behaviors, breathing issues, or rashes in the dogs. If the first test goes well, I start using it more often. If any of the dogs develop a new cough or signs of breathing issues, I discontinue use of it and put it on the never again list. Generally speaking, the air care products made for combating pet odors are safe to use around pets. Finally, I want to talk about essential oils and how they are made. In short, plant materials are crushed and put into large vats of water. The water is heated until steam is produced and the oils are distilled out. Most of these distilled oils are too strong to place directly on the skin, so they are cut with carrier oil like almond, jojoba, olive, or coconut. However, those oils have very strong scents of their own. So sometimes you will see grapeseed oil is used as a carrier oil when the end product needs to have a lighter scent. There was a time when I made my own essential oils using a crock pot and grapeseed oil was my preferred carrier oil. Now modern science tells us that grapes are toxic to dogs. I will admit that this one confuses me since my grandmother once had a dachshund that ate grapes and muscadines straight off the vine. Heidi never appeared to get sick from them. I also had a poodle that I gave oatmeal raisin cookies to as treats and he never got sick. However, since research shows dogs can be poisoned by grapes, I keep grapes and raisins away from the dogs now. So I believe it is important to note that grapeseed oil is currently believed to be safe for dogs. The toxic compounds are not transferred to the oil when it is extracted and distilled. I just want everyone to have happy, healthy pets. I know that my dogs provide me with stress relief, exercise, and unconditional love. They are so very important to my mental health and helping me maintain a positive outlook. So please, read labels, do research, and proceed with caution when bringing new air care products into your home. Cinnamon is generally considered safe for dogs to eat, but the essential oils are considered toxic. However, my dogs have never had any issues when I use the crisp apple scents that have an undertone of cinnamon. I don't put cinnamon in homemade potpourri, but the amounts in commercial air fresheners and oil plug-ins seem to sit below the level needed for toxicity. I check out each ingredient for toxicity before choosing to make my own essential oils or potpourri. I do not buy essential oils to use in diffusers that are toxic to my dogs. I keep all essential oils on shelves or behind doors and out of the dog's reach. I would be devastated if any of my fur kids died because I was careless or uninformed. How do you keep your pets safe from inhaled toxins? Do you use essential oils in your own home? 
do you know of any essential oils that smell pleasant and are safe for dogs? Please share your knowledge and feel free to ask questions in the comments.